Okay, guys. Uh, so, welcome to today's TK session. Uh, and as usual, we will be uh, predominantly discussing uh, questions from the current affairs, apart from a few questions in st from starting GK2. But as always, uh, like I mentioned, it would the, uh, the, the central team would be uh, current affairs question. Okay. So let's start, shall we? Let's see how good I, uh, how much you learned in the past one week. Question number one. Okay, uh, you all must have read about this thing. It was plastic across all the newspapers too. In fact, uh, that Justice uh, P. Sadashivam from Tamil Nadu, he has been appointed as the uh, Chief Justice of India. Right? Uh, this, uh, this this was done on June 29. Right? This uh, this one week back. Now the question is, uh, he will he will be the what Chief Justice of India, like you know, is it the 39th Chief Justice of India or 40th or 41st or 42nd? That's the question. So, like, most of you must be aware of it. Uh, those of all who are following the news, uh, Mr. Satashivam from Tamil Nadu, he has been appointed as the next Chief Justice of India, CJI, which stands for Chief Justice of India. So, the question is, he will be the dash Chief Justice of India. Is he the 39th, 40th, 41st, or 42nd? Let's see how many can answer this. Okay, we got some answers saying he's uh, 41st, but uh, the right answer to this question is B. Mr. Sadashivam, Justice P. Sadashivam, he happens to be the 40th Chief Justice of India, right? Over the span of 65 years, right? We have had uh, 39 uh, Chief Justices before him. Right, so he would be the first Chief Justice of India. All right. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, so the question is, which of the following next generation network service providers has declared to launch a series of satellites, which is uh, which are supposed to provide fast and cheap internet and phone service to remote areas in 180 countries? Question again. Which of the following next generation network service providers has declared to launch a series of satellites which are supposed to provide fast, cheap internet and phone service to remote areas in more than 180 countries? Is it global networks? Is it Earthnet? Is it OTV networks? Or is it Pan Universe networks? Okay, uh, the right answer to this question is in fact C, it's O3V networks. Okay, uh, since you are talking about this initiative, right, uh, I'll, uh, let's see how many of you have, uh, are aware of this project that is launched by Google recently. Google has, uh, in fact, it has uh, chosen to select places where it will launch these uh, air balloons. These air balloons have the capacity to uh, provide Wi-Fi in remote areas where you won't expect to have internet connection. Okay. This was done, I think, coming on last month. I want you guys to know, uh, tell me what is the name of this project. It's a, uh, it's a service initiated by Google to help those people uh, who are not able to in access internet in remote locations. They have come with a pretty innov uh, innovative solution for this. They will be launching weather balloons, uh, right, from uh, among these remote areas, which would provide Wi-Fi, uh, in fact, internet services, right, wireless internet. Can someone tell me uh, the name of this project? Anyone? Uh, the name of this project is called Project Loom, L W O N. Uh, it has launched only recently, so this is basically uh, the they provide an SAP hardware for setting up an internet connection in balloons, inside balloons, right? So it's, in the, it's intended for providing internet access to remote areas. Okay, so they use basically high altitude balloons uh, situated around 20 kilometers from the uh, surface of Earth. Okay, and it will give the speed uh, 3G speeds. Okay, so the name of this project is called Project Loon, L W O N. Okay. So, uh, 
I'll just type it for you just in case if my voice is not here for those people. Project Loom L double O N. That's for the project initiated by Google. Right? So moving on to the next question. Okay, since we are talking about Google, uh, uh, can someone tell me what is the uh, what is the latest OS that has been launched only few days back, three four days back? The, the latest mobile OS to hit the market. We all know about Android, iOS, BlackBerry, and maybe some people might have heard of Vigo and other operating systems too. But uh, yes, that's right. Akash has got it right, and Windows too. But uh, I am talking about a very cheap alternative, open source alternative that is supposed to fight the dominance of Android and iPhone in uh, mobile phone industry. And uh, for all those who do not know about this, it's Firefox OS. Yes, Firefox of Mozilla fame, the, the browser company, right? So they have uh, in fact launched a mobile OS too. The Alcatel has launched and uh, the T have launched two phones. In fact, they they uh, they come at a very cheap price. In fact, launched at I think forty-five dollars. If my memory serves me right, okay. This is the latest entrant in the mobile OS market, okay. And uh, the answer for question two, by the way, is C, O three B networks, okay. So moving on to the next question. INS Trikan. Which was recently commissioned commissioned into Indian Navy is a submarine, b aircraft carrier, c rescue vessel, d salwar class frigate. So INS Trikan, which was recently commissioned into Indian Navy, what is it? Is it a submarine? Is it an carrier? Okay, uh, I'll just mention it again uh, for the, uh, the the piece of information again for the last question. Then. Latest OS is Firefox OS. Okay, uh, few of them have requested the name of it. So, like, yeah, the name of the OS is Firefox OS. And coming back to the uh, current question, right? Uh, INS Trikan, which was recently commissioned into Indian Navy, is the submarine, is an aircraft carrier, is the rescue vessel, or is the Salwar class frigate? Let's see how can answer this. How many can answer this? The right answer to the question is B. I guess Trikan is a great, in fact, uh, built in Russia, okay, and uh, we were commissioned only uh, recently, basically, uh, we got a contract with Russia on this, uh, equipping our Navy with uh, all the recent uh, latest machines, so as part of that, this was uh, commissioned recently, okay. For those who are not aware, uh, no, uh, what frigate means? It's basically uh, it's a warship, okay. And in fact, it's frigate. Uh, it happens to be a stealth vessel too, right? So it can actually, uh, like you know, uh, it it has the technology to make itself uh, invisible in the sense that it won't be detected detected using the standard radar signals, okay? So. So the right answer to this question is D. For those who are not able to uh, hear me properly, the right answer to this question is D. Talwar, uh, Talwar class frigate. Frigate is basically uh, a warship. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next question. Okay. India has decided to develop. The Bangalore Mumbai Economic Corridor project with the help of which among the five countries? The question is uh, India has decided to develop this Bangalore Mumbai Economic Corridor project, right? So uh, it has collaborated with which of the following countries? Is it Japan, is it Germany, or is it France, or is it Britain?
the name of this process is Bangalore, Mumbai. Economic corridor project, right? So, what is the other country involved in this thing? And the right answer to this question is Britain, not Japan or Germany or France. So, India is basically uh, is collaborating with UK to develop this corridor. Okay. So it, it, it would be basically uh, developed with Indian government, uh, dirty Indian government and uh, a set of private companies from United Kingdom. Okay. The, uh, the plan is yet to be finalized in the sense the final design and everything. The officials would be move, meeting soon in the next few months and uh, finalize this thing. Okay. So, so the right answer to this question is Britain B. Go to the next question. The 39th edition of G8 summit, which was recently held, uh, was held in which of the following countries? The 39th edition of the G8 summit was held in which of the following countries? Is it Germany? Is it Northern Ireland? Is it Japan? Is it Canada? Let's see, we got, uh, yes, we, most of the people seem to be aware of this thing, yes, uh, it was conducted recently in uh, Northern Ireland, alright, uh, so since you are talking about G8, can, uh, can someone tell me, it's obvious, yes, of course, uh, uh, the eight countries are part of this thing, right, so uh, when was this forum originated, like, you know, uh, when, uh, when did the, the, this uh, group of eight, right, the group of eight countries, uh, they comprise of the eight of the world's largest e economies, right? So, uh, when have they, uh, when did this forum originate? In which year? Okay, for, uh, I'll give you the answer for this thing. Something you should remember because uh, it's an important thing, it could appear in static, uh, static GK questions, okay? The answer to this question, that would be 1975. So the First G8 summit was held in the year 1975. Okay, the first summit was held in the year 1975. Okay. Uh, and the recent one was held in Northern Ireland. There are, uh, as usual, there are a lot of pro protests too uh, associated with it, right? And uh, we move to the next question. Okay. Who am I calling personalities? Have you named the most powerful celebrity by Forbes? Among the six women and four men who made to the top ten. So, uh, Forbes releases this list of uh, it releases the list of richest people on the planet. Apart from that, uh, it, uh, uh, it releases every year. It releases a list of the most powerful celebrities. Uh, by powerful celebrities, they uh, it means like you know celebrities with more fan following, with uh, celebrities with more impact, right? So. Who among the following is uh, voted the most powerful celebrity by Forbes? Is it Lady Gaga, is it Madonna, is it Paris Hilton, or is it Oprah Victory? Let's see how many can answer this.
Yes, most of most of you guys seem to have got the right answer. In fact, Oprah Winfrey uh, was voted as the most powerful celebrity by Forbes magazine, right? So Forbes is in general is famous for right for its uh, annual list of billionaires, the richest people on the planet, right? So it, uh, apart from that, it is the list of most powerful celebrities too. And Oprah Winfrey was voted as a, as the most powerful celebrity by Forbes. It depends on a lot of factors. They have certain parameters for establishing this thing: that the brand value of the person, the number of people who watch them on TV, number of people who follow on Twitter. It could be a lot, a lot of variables. And ultimately, Oprah Winfrey was crowned. Okay. So let's move to the next question. This one was in the news recently again, right? Let's see how many can answer this. Recently, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and UPA chairperson Sonia Gandhi flagged off the first train which connects Banihal in Jammu with Kaziganj in Kashmir, right? Before this, even one day before this, there were militants attacked a uh, military convoy and killed more than uh, eight people, if I remember, right? So, and and the question is. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Mr. Manmohan Singh and UPA chairperson Sonia Gandhi, they flagged out the first train that connects Banihal in Jammu with Kaziganj in Kashmir. Right? So this is the first train that connects uh, these two uh, uh, geographic regions. Right? So the answer is, the question is, through which range does this train travel through? Is it Zastar range, is it Nubra Valley, is it Pir Panjal range or is it Shivali range? Yes, the right answer to this question is in fact the Panjal range. Okay. So uh, let's move to the next question now. Which among the following days is celebrated as International International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking? Which among the following days is celebrated as International Day Against Drug abuse and illicit trafficking. Uh, in fact, on this day, uh, you would have seen, uh, in fact, center spread ads uh, advertising for the government uh, regarding uh, drug abuse and illicit trafficking. Uh, right? Uh, it happened, it was only again from the office itself, we could find out it happened only recently. Right? So, the question is which of the following days is observed as? It's not celebrated as, it's more like it's observed as International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Is it 25th June or is it 26th or is it 27th or 28th? The right answer to this question is B, that's right. Most of you have got it right. The answer is B, 26th June. Okay. 26th June is the day on which uh, International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking is observed. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Turn down the heat, climate extremes, regional impacts, and the case for resilience. An executive summary report has been brought by. Which of these following four organizations? Which among these following uh, four organizations? Has, uh, has come up with the following report titled Turn Down the Heat, Climate Extremes, Regional Impacts and the Case for Resilience. This is an executive summary report that was uh, brought by which of the following organizations? Is it World Bank? Is it UNFC? Is it Greenpeace? Or is it UNEP? Uh, you might want to take a wild guess and say it's Greenpeace because even the title looks a bit uh, poetic in, 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 in a sense key. Greenpeace are one people that try to uh, right, appeal to the emotional aspect of people. But the right answer to this question is World Bank. The right answer to this question is World Bank. World Bank has come up with the report titled Turn Down the Heat. It warns us about uh, 
the impacts of global warming and other right uh, other and other man made disasters right okay can someone tell me what the full form the answer to this question is uh, world bank by the way a can someone tell me what is the full form of unfccc unfccc anyone what is unfccc stand for uh unfccc stands for uh united nations framework convention on climate change it's not forum it's framework united nations framework convention on climate change i'll just uh, type it here unf CCC stands for United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, right? Uh, can someone tell me what UNEP stands for? UNEP. UNEP stands for United Nations Environment Program. It's uh, it's basically an advocate of uh you know sustainable sustainable models of uh development that includes uh, which does not include the depletion of economic uh, ecological resources right so unep stands for united nations environment program okay and the uh, the answer of answer to this question is by the way is world bank right so just make a uh, I hope you guys remember the full forms of these both U N E U N F C C C, right? Yes, it has been spelled right. United Nations Environment Program U N E P. That's what it stands for. And U N F C C C stands for United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Right? Okay. Let's move on to the next question. I think we can answer this question concerning cricket. So let's see. Recently, BCCI, which was Board of Control of Cricket in India, has been awarded to host two major events of international cricket. Namely, recently BCCI has been awarded to host two major events of international cricket. So the question is, what are these two international events we're talking about? is the first icc world test championship in 2017 world t20 world cup in 2020 or 50 over world cup in 2023 20 or and icc world cup for new version or this world t20 world cup in 2016 and 50 over world cup in 2023 let's see how many can answer this yes most of you people have got it right in fact it's right answer to this is c basically world t20 Cup in 2016 and 50 over World Cup in 2023, right? So the right answer to this question is C. The T20 World Cup and 50 over World Cup. T20 World Cup in 2016 and 50 over World Cup in 2023. All right. So next question. Which state has launched a unique scheme called? Mukhyamantri Bijli Patel Lamp Yojana for Energy Con Conservation. So one of these following four states is launch has launched a scheme called Mukhyamantri Bijli Patel Lamp Yojana. So uh, which uh, which one of which, uh, which among the following states that has launched this program? Is it Haryana? Is it Rajasthan? Is it Himachal Pradesh? Or is it Madhya Pradesh? Uh, the name of this scheme is Mukhya Mantri Bijli Budget Lamp Yojana. Let's see how many can answer this. It's a uh, it's a unique scheme, uh, basically meant for energy con conservation. 
right? So the uh, the government would be providing two CFL bulbs free of cost to elect all uh, electric uh, all uh, to the, for the, all those electric electricity consumers in, uh, in 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 villages and and those people who are be, uh, below poverty line in urban areas. Okay, and the answer to this question is Rajasthan. Rajasthan B, that's right, most of the people have got it right. Rajasthan, is, Rajasthan government has launched this uh, scheme called Mukhyamantri Vizli Patas Lapio. So uh, basically uh, what they would be doing is they would be distributing two CFL lamps, right, for conserving, uh, for conserving electricity to all the households with electricity in, in villages and all those people who are below poverty line in the in the cities or urban areas. Okay, so the scheme is launched by Rajasthan state government. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Which among this has been the news recently again? Which among the following chief ministers? has been presented the prestigious United Nations Public Service Award for his mass contact program initiative. Which of the following chief ministers has been awarded the prestigious United Nations Public Service Award? Is it uh, Gujarat, is it Bihar, is it Goa or is it Kerala? This has been the news very recently in fact. United Nations Public Service Award. It has been recently awarded to one of to one of the state governments, right? Chief Minister of the government in particular, right? And the right answer to this is D. Kerala. Can someone tell me who is the Chief Minister of Kerala? Anyone? Who is the present Chief Minister of Kerala? see how many people can get this right. The current Chief Minister of Kerala. Is Mr. Uman Chandi. That's right. All of you got it right. Jailalta is the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Okay. And uh, Mr. Uman Chandi. He is the Chief Minister of Kerala and he was he has been awarded this uh, prestigious United Nations Public Service Award. Alright? It's not Jayalta, Jayalta is the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Okay. Uh, so the name of this Chief Minister is Uman Chandi. I'll just type it again here for you. Uh, moving on to the next question. Who is the incumbent Prime Minister of Australia? Let's see who, how we can answer this. Who is the incumbent Prime Minister of Australia? First of all, let's see how many of you are aware of the meaning of the word incumbent. The incumbent is uh, is basically the the current holder of a political office or any position, in fact, right? So the the question is basically, who is the current Prime Minister of Australia? Is it Kevin Rudd? Is it Julia Gillard? Is it John Howard or is it Albert Rudd? That's right, Sajin. It means occupying the present, the current, the, the existing. Right? 
right? So uh, the right answer to this question is in fact A. It's Kevin Rudd. Okay. Okay. Uh, now moving on to the next question. This has been asked in fact in one of our previous uh, webinar too. Let's see how many of you can remember. Recently, India's first all women police station became operational in which of the six weeks? The police station comprising of, uh, of entirely women has become operational in one of the following four cities. Is it Itanagar, is it Bangalore, is it Mumbai, or is it Hyderabad? I repeat the question again. Which of the following cities became uh, became the first city in India to uh, have an operational police station where all the staff are uh, women? Is it Itanagar? Is it Bangalore? Is it Mumbai? Or is it Hyderabad? The right answer to this question is yes. It's Itanagar. Most of you got it right. The answer, right answer to this question is Itanagar. Itanagar is uh, Itanagar is the capital of which state? Can someone tell you uh, Itanagar is the capital of which state? That's right, Ashri and Sachin. It's, uh, it's Arunachal, not Assam. It's Arunachal Pradesh. Itanagar, which is the capital of Arunachal Pradesh, right? So that's where the first all women police station has become operational. Okay? Keep a note of Uh, this, this has been a bit controversial, right? Uh, the particular state government has recently, right, uh, has issued a survey making 18 and 21 the age for marriage for Muslim girls and boys respectively. Which of the following state governments has issued a survey making 18 and 21 the age for marriage for Muslim girls and boys respectively? Uh, so before, prior to this, they, uh, they issued a note, notice saying uh, that between the uh, age of it should be 16 for girls and I think it's 19 for boys, but it has been changed again and reverted back to the constitutional one, right? So the question is which of the following states? Is it Goa? Is it West Bengal? Is it Gujarat? Or is it Kerala? Uh, and even for those who are not aware of this answer to, again, if you know that, uh, like, you know, in fact, Kerala is a state which has a considerable chunk of Muslim population, you can get the right answer, right? And so answer to this question is Kerala. It was Kerala government who has issued a circular recently uh, making 18 and 21 the age of marriage for Muslim girls and boys respectively. Kerala, as you should know, uh, is the most uh, developed state in India and as if, uh, as opposed to most of the states, it has, if, uh, so they, uh, like, you know, the percentage of minorities as I speak at the national level is high over there. In fact, uh, if I, last time I remember, it's, it's around 50, 30, 20 like that, Hindus, Muslims, and Christians. Right, uh, so moving on to the next question. Which state government has announced interest-free loans to individual weavers up to the limit of rupees one lakh on the lines of those given to farmers? So, which of the following state government has announced interest-free loans to individual weavers up to the limit of rupees one lakh on the lines of those given to farmers? So, basically, to uh, relieve the plight of lot of uh, weavers who are suffering, right? This particular state government has announced interest-free loans up to rupees one lakh. Question is, which of the following states did that? Is it UP? Is it Gujarat? Is it AP? Or is it Maharashtra? The right answer to this question is yes. Uh, Shreya, you got it right. Uh, it's Andhra Pradesh. The right answer to this question is Andhra Pradesh AP. AP government has recently announced interest-free loans to individual viewers up to a limit of rupees one lakh. All right. 
So the answer is C, Maharashtra. Sorry, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, the answer to this question is A, B, C. We go to the next question. Major, a feature film of which country has recently won Golden Goblin for the best feature film at 16th Shanghai International Film Festival in 2013? Major is a feature film made by which country? The question is, uh, it has recently won Golden Goblet for best feature film at the 16th Shanghai International Film Festival. Right. So the question is, uh, from which movie, uh, sorry, from which country is this movie? Which country has produced this movie? Let's see, so a lot of people are saying Russia. Let's see which country it is. Is it Russia, is it Italy, is it Turkey, or is it Iran? The right answer is in fact Russia, yes. No. Now, moving on to the next question. The answer is Russia. So just make a note of this point too. So the, the 16th Shanghai Inter, uh, the International Festival was held in Shanghai, Shanghai, China. So uh, make a note of this too. Okay, so the right answer to this question is Russia A. And make a note that uh, the International Film Festival was held in Shanghai. Okay. So we go to the next question. Who has received the India Abroad Publishers Special Excellence Award 2012 for her report Globalizing Torture released in February 2013? Who among the following has received the India Abroad Publishers Special Excellence Award 2012 for her report, glo report titled Globalizing Torture? Uh, from the name itself, we could uh, actually eliminate one of the options since it says specifically says for her report, right? So is it Champa Lahiri or is it Sheena Ayengar or is it Neera Tandon? Or is it Amrit Singh? The right answer to this question is it's Amrit Singh. Okay, uh, the name might sound uh, might not uh, sound feminine, feminine, but yeah. So it's Miss Amrit Singh who has received the India Abroad Publishers Special Excellence Award 2012 for her report tit that is titled Globalizing Torture, which is released in 2013. Okay. So Jampa Lahiri, she was another renowned uh, uh, Indian. Uh, American of, uh, of Indian origin, she has won the Pulitzer Prize, long time back now. So the right answer to this question is B, Amrit Singh. Okay. So, we go to the next question. To promote sports part, part, participation across the world, International Olympic Day is celebrated across the world on which of the following days? To promote sports participation all across the world, Right? International Olympic Day is celebrated across the world on which of the following days? Is it June 23rd or is it June 27th or is it May 27th or is it June 7th? June 23rd, June 27th, May 27th, June 7th. Which of the following days 
is celebrated as International Olympic Day. That's right, 23rd June. The right answer to this question is June 23. June 20, June 23 is celebrated as International Olympic Day to promote sports participation across the world. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. Okay. Probably shouldn't be shouldn't even be asking this question. Yeah. Which among the following countries has won ICC Champions Trophy 2013? As obvious this can be, yes. So the, the answer to this is India. Okay. So, uh, and, and again you should be aware of this thing too, but I'm just uh, repeating it here. This would be the last championship trophy that would be held, right? So from next year onward, this will be uh, replaced by uh, the World Test Championship, right? So we we'll go to the next question. Yeah, this person was in the news recently. In fact, there's a lot of pictures too. Uh, he has successfully completed walking the two-inch thick cable across Little Colorado River near the Grand Canyon. So who is this person? Who has successfully completed walking the two inch thick cable across the Little Colorado River Gorge near the Grand Canyon recently? We the news recently, right? Is it Carl Valenda? Is it Nick Valenda? Is it Babbitt or is it Alfredo Cordona? Uh, the right answer to this question is. is that's right, it's Nick Valenda. Nick Valenda is the person who has completed walking the two inch thick cable. Imagine that. In the Grand that was the Grand Canyon. Right? Took him around yes, thirty minutes approximately to complete this thing. But yeah, quite an astounding feat. Would probably be featuring featuring in the next Red Bull ad. Okay. The right answer to this question is Nick Valenda. The next question. Which pharmaceutical company has recently received approval from the US health regulator to manufacture tablets used for treating a type of HIV infection? Which pharmaceutical company among the following has recently re received approval from the US health regulator to manufacture tablets used for treating a type of HIV infection. Is it Aurobindo Pharma, is it Aventis Pharma, is it Natco Pharma or is it Lupin? Let's see how many can answer this. Yes, few of, few of you have got it right. I won't say what the answer is though, but yeah. Is it Aravindo Pharma, is it Aventis Pharma, is it Natco Pharma or is it Lupin? The right answer to this question is A, it's Aurobindo Pharma. Alright, uh, Aurobindo Pharma was the company uh, that has received the required approval from the US health regulator to manufacture medicine to tablets uh, to be specific uh, for treating HIV infection, okay? And in fact, two, uh, two people, uh, it's, uh, if you've been reading the news lately, uh, in fact, this, this one came up only yesterday, two persons were uh, declared to be completely fit. In fact, they still have this, uh, have the HIV virus inside their body, but, uh, but it's in, in a dormant condition. Uh, and this happened because of uh, the blood transfusion that has taken place use, uh, using stem cell therapy, right? So, so uh, it's still considered a miracle, and they are still under, you know, uh, testing. But uh, still, now uh, there are only three people who are actually officially declared as cured from HIV, right? Despite having those viruses. It, it, it almost happened accidentally because they were receiving treatments uh, for leukemia, part of which was replacing 
research in stem cell, stem cell therapy, right? So, and that has actually put their H, uh, uh, AIDS under check, okay? And it, these two people are still under observation, of course, but even uh, it, it appeared in the news recently because they have stopped taking the medicine, uh, antiretroviral medicine, right? They have stopped taking the medicine for more than six months and yeah, they are still perfectly fit. They seem to be recovering, recovering from HIV, in fact. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. Uh, the answer is uh, the same. Uh, this webinar, in fact, would be uploaded in your Swiss account too. You'll be able to access all of that. And uh, we would be sharing the PPT along with the Swiss at later time, right? Let's look at the question. Name the Abu Dhabi based Lulu Group boss who has topped the inaugural Forbes 100 top Indian leaders in the United Arab Emirates. Name the Abu Dhabi based Lulu Group boss. That's a funny sounding group name, yes. Top the inaugural Forbes 100 top Indian leaders in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, who is this person? Is it Muhammad Yusuf? Or is it Salman Al Fahad? Or is it M. A. Yusuf Ali? Or is it Dildar Ali Ranga? I read it again. Uh, name the person. Uh, name the Abu Dhabi based Lulu Group boss who has stopped the Forbes 100 top Indian leaders in list. Forbes has compiled a list of. Uh, Top 100 Indian leaders in United Arab Emirates, right? So, who is the person who has topped this list? Or he is the most influential Indian person, person of Indian origin in United Arab Emirates? The right answer to this question is C. It's Mr. M. A. Yusuf Ali, who is the uh, the boss of Lulu Group. Okay. So the right answer to this question, M. A. Yusuf Ali. Okay. Right. Let's hit the next question now. The largest as well as well as the brightest moon of the year, 2013, called the super moon, was observed on which of the following dates? The largest as well as the brightest moon for the year 2013, not of the year 2013, for the year 2013, it's called super noon, moon, it was observed on which of the following dates? So this, uh, this phenomena happens uh, on, on a full moon or a new moon day, uh, basically the moon is at its fullest and at the same time it's at, it's at the closest point to earth too. So it appears considerably larger than the normal size. Okay. There were some, some theories regarding this. Uh, when this happens there would be an eruption of volcanoes, earthquakes due to the gravitation pull of moon. But the uh, none of has been established conclusively, right? So, anyway, coming to the question, so on which day of 2013 was this observed? Is it June 23rd or June 21st or is it March 23rd or is it May 27th? Okay, so the right answer to this question is June 23rd. June 23rd night, that was uh, considered the first. That was when moon appeared at its brightest. Okay. So uh, moving on to the next question now. Uh, for those who are interested, uh, this is uh, referred to as the technical name for this would be perigee CCT of the Earth Moon system. I guess. I'll just copy it here. The 
this is referred to as perigee syzygy of the earth moon system it's basically a technical name just keep, just keep in mind i'll just uh, type it here This, uh, this is known as the perigee syzygy of the earth moon sun system all also known as in common words it, we refer to it as super moon right the technical name for this would be perigee syzygy of the earth moon sun system you must be familiar with the word right apogee perigee the moon is uh, at the farthest and it's at the closest right so the obvious question is a anyways june 23rd all right let's move on to the next question now name the japan's highest mountain that has been given world heritage status by the unesco recently is a good fact because uh, two things in fact fact number 1 is you uh, by the end of this you would know what is the name of uh, japan's highest peak and apart from that you will also be know uh, knowing that like you know it has been awarded uh, world heritage status by unesco okay so let's see how many can answer this the name of japan japan's highest mountain peak is it mount arakawa naka mount fuji or is it mount norikura or is it mount okuhotaka it's an easy question most of the, uh, most of the people must be aware of this thing it's mount fuji Mount Fuji is a is Japan's highest mountain peak. It happens to be uh, volcanic, right? And it is it has been recently awarded World Heritage status by UNESCO. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. following four persons recently nominated by Barack Obama as chief of federal bureau of investigation also known as FBI right so which among the following four persons was recently nominated by Barack Obama as the next chief of FBI Robert S Miller the three is it william j burns is it james b adams or is it james brian comey is it a b c or d this person has been nominated as the next fbi chief by barack obama so who the right answer to this question is robert s miller the third okay he robert s miller third has been nominated as the next chief of federal bureau of investigation by barack obama okay so the right answer to this question is a okay uh we go to the next question to revise newspaper advertisement rates the union ministry of information and broadcasting has constituted a committee under the chairmanship of which among the four persons to revise newspaper advertisement rates the union ministry of information and broadcasting has constituted a committee under the chairmanship of which of the following persons is it k santanam is it js mathur is it uday kumar varma or is it anil pande which of the following person is appointed as the chair of the of the committee that has been appointed uh, to revise newspaper advertisement rates is uh, most of you seem to have got it right it's mr js mathur js mathur is the person who has been uh, who is the chairman of this committee which which put uh, 
consider revising the newspaper advertisement rates. Okay. So right answer to this question is B. Okay. We go to the next question. Recently, uh, in a certain neighboring country, private daily newspapers came back into circulation for the first time since 1964. Name the country. You know, this question has been asked in one of the previous sessions. Let's see how many of you can answer this. It's again an easy question. You can use common sense. Right? Which of the following countries has been in a state of turmoil? I would in fact say all of them except for Bhutan, but like the Myanmar, which was referred to as was under a military janta rule all this while, right? So it's, uh, that's the country where uh, private daily newspapers are back in circulation, right? All this while, uh, the military janta had a government edition which was uh, used as, as a mere propaganda tool, right? So now uh, they have opened venues for private daily newspapers too, all right? So the right answer to this question is yes, it's Myanmar. Okay, can someone tell me what is the, uh, the longest river that flows in Myanmar? The name of the longest river that flows in Myanmar? Anyone? It's uh, Iravadi. I double R A W A double D Y. It's uh, it's an anglicized name of Airavati, the uh, Airavati, the name of the elephant Indra travels on, right? Uh, Indra till Airavati. It's uh, it's corrupted form Iravati. I'll just uh, spell it for you here. Iravati is the name of the is the uh, longest river in Burma. Okay. Next question. The following book titled 1857 to 1947, Forgotten Heroes and Martyrs of India's Freedom Movement, is the fifth in the series of Andolan Ekpustak Se, was written by which among the following? Is it Mr. Dharmadikari or is it Shivnath Cha or is it Ramesh Chandra? Or is Romila Thapar. Okay, the, the name of the book is we are talking about is 857 to Forgotten Heroes and Martyrs of India's Freedom Movement. Who is the person who has penned this book, authored this book rather? Is it C.S. Dharmadikari? Is it Shivnath Cha? Is it Ramesh Chandra? Or is it Romila Thapar? That's right, Shreya, you got it right. The right answer to this question is Mr. Shivnath Cha. This is the fifth in the series of Andolan Ek Pustak Se. Right? Uh, the name of the book is Forgotten Heroes and Martyrs of India's Freedom Movement. It was written by Mr. Shivnath Cha. Okay, so the right answer to this question is B. Come the next question. Also, is also known as Chogam, the 23rd Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting, C H O G M Chogam, the 23rd Commonwealth Heads of Government would be held in which of the following countries? Is it Sri Lanka, India, Australia, or Zimbabwe? The 23rd Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting would be would be held in which of the following countries? Is it Sri Lanka? Is India, is it Australia or is it Zimbabwe? Okay, so uh, the right answer to this question is uh, Sri Lanka. Okay, uh, uh, this particular meeting, right? Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. It, it is uh, 
often referred to as Chogum, right? C H O G M. It would be held the 23rd of this uh, would be held in Sri Lanka. Okay, uh, uh, and thanks for bringing this issue to me. A uh, few, uh, few of you have uh, got this to my attention. That says uh, question number 27: the upcoming chief. Some of you feel that the right answer is Mr. Kony. I'll uh, I'll just refer to that and get back to you later. Okay, probably at the end of the session I'll just discuss that. Okay, as far as I remember, it was Mr. Wilson third. I'll just refer back refer to that. Okay. No. Question: Which among the following business group has been declared as richest Asian group of Britain in March 2013? Which among the following groups, business group, has been declared as the richest Asian group of Britain in March 2013? Is it Metal? Is it Hinduja? Is it Hotten? Is it Kaparo? Arcelor and Metal, yeah, just found by the merger of Arcelor and uh, Metal firm and Hinduja they were they kind of acquired a bit of notoriety in the 90s and the alleged involvement in the Bofo scam at Hinduja brothers so who, am, who among these two has been declared as a richest Asian group in Britain Horton and Kaparo you know, I'm not aware of them who they are and the right answer to this question is B it's Hinduja, Hinduja, Hinduja group, not not Arcelor Metal group. It's Hinduja group. Hinduja group. Uh, it has been declared the richest Asian group of Britain, right? So moving on to the next question. Okay. According to the survey of NASA by the scientists of Tel Aviv University. Which among the following cities has been declared as the most polluted city of the world? Which among the following cities has been declared as the most polluted city of the world? Is it Tokyo? Is it Bangalore? Is it Karachi? Or is it Beijing? Give you a minute to think about it. Which of the following cities has been declared as a as the most polluted city in the world? Let's see how many can answer this. And in fact, this, uh, I'm sorry, does it say uh, it's not the most polluted city? It is actually, uh, we're talking about the second most polluted because that's what Bangalore, Bangalore has been declared as the second most polluted city. I'm sorry about this last year. Uh, Bangalore has been declared as not the most polluted city in the world, but second most polluted city, right? Uh, it's due to uh, fog, not fog, sorry, smog and smoke. And all the other air pollutants, okay. And uh, Houston has been declared as the most clear city. This for your information, Houston was declared the most least polluted city in the world. I'll just spell it for you. Houston. Was the name of the city that was declared the least polluted in the world? Okay, can someone tell me what is the most polluted city in the world? Okay. 
anyone can anyone tell me again uh, these are rp uh, based on a lot of surveys and like you know the, the parameters vary, uh, vary from one methodology to other right right so can anyone tell me the c uh, which city is, is voted as a, as the most polluted city in the the second most polluted is bangalore okay it's a chinese town that goes by the name linfen okay l i n f e n linfen but like i said uh, these uh, this vary from one methodology to other so there is another source if i am come right uh, in which kanpur is considered the most polluted city in india right but again according to this source which was released in 2013 it says limpen in china is considered to be the most polluted city on the planet in fact you can just uh, look for it on youtube not just google the entire city is covered in fog i'll just spell it for you limpen l i n f e n is a city in uh, china that is uh, considered as the most polluted city on the planet okay so uh, moving on to the next question yeah uh, that's it right. that uh, this question is wrong in fact it should have been right the second most polluted right the most polluted uh, city in the world is limpen okay uh, sorry about the confusion just make a note of it the most polluted city in the world is limpen another easy peasy question who among the following cricketers has been awarded the man of the series in champions trophy cricket 2013 is it rohit sharma is it ravindra jadeja is it shikhar dhawan or is it chris gayle and just like i thought lot of people have fumbled with this most uh, the right answer to this question is shikhar dhawan not ravindra jadeja it shikhar dhawan who has been awarded with man of the series award uh, the man of the final was of course ravindra jadeja the man of the match in the final but the man of the series award uh, was presented to shikhar dhawan okay so the right answer to this question is c we go to the next question according to the latest global financial centers index gfci which is the only indian city in the list of world leading financial centers according to the latest global financial centers index gfci which is the only indian city in the list of world's leading financial centers again it's easy to guess the hub of all economic activity where uh, the one you talk about right on the sensex and nifty all these indices are uh, they cal calculated in mumbai right mumbai is the answer in fact not delhi bangalore or hyderabad it's mumbai mumbai is considered the economic capital of india in fact right it's the only indian city in the list of world leading financial centers okay that's where the bse building is bomb stock exchange building is located to of course okay next question which among the following countries could become the world's largest economy by 2016 according to the organization for economic cooperation and development which among the following countries could become the world's largest economy yes we've been hearing about this for a while now in fact people have predicted that this should happen by 2020 or 2030 right so uh, the question is so which of them which of the following countries 
would would could become the world's largest economy and we all are the uh, which economy uh, which country has the largest economy currently currently it's united states so one of these countries is uh, could mo- is most most likely to take over us as a as a as the largest economy right so and the answer is china in fact we all heard about the strides china has made in the field of not just in technology but you know, humanitarian industries too they have uh, invested quite a lot in infrastructure and manufacturing sector right it will be probably only in a decade or two maybe we would, would all be converging in mandarin or cantonese in, in stuff english right yeah the right answer is china yeah in, in fact india was also predicted to just overtake china by i don't know 2030 or something i think i may be wrong but yeah the growth rate has since then slowed right it has come to 5% now which was hitting double digits by a few years back right uh it's only four in fact that's right it has come below 5 to it's 4.8 now i think india was uh, also pin to become uh, take over china i don't know i think it's 2030 if i'm not sure i'm not sure about that but not at the rate at which we are going right now it looks next to impossible because that too also has any uh, an impressive growth rate something uh, if i'm sure i think it's around 5 to 6% we go to the next question which among the following indian companies has lined up an investment of rupees 5500 crores to produce gas from its coal bed methane blocks in west bengal jharkhand madhya pradesh and odisha which among the following indian companies has lined up an investment of rupees 5500 crores to produce gas from its coal coal bed methane blocks in west bengal jharkhand madhya pradesh and odisha is it reliance energy is it sr energy is it jindal energy or is it vipro energy there was one called vipro energy and the right answer to this question is b sr energy that's right sr energy was the indian company that has lined up investment of 5500 crores to produce gas from its coal coal bed methane blocks in west bengal jharkhand madhya pradesh and odisha this region in fact you all must be knowing right uh, there a lot of reserves of coal bauxite and there were a lot of controversial issue uh, there were a lot of controversies regarding issuing of this coal blocks and mining blocks right and market this for yeah i think the year in which india is supposed to overtake china is 2060 it seems because as of now china is uh, leaps and bounds ahead of india okay the right answer to this question is b it's b and energy okay we go to the next question sebi has moved to the supreme court seeking arrest and barring the group which failed to comply with court's order to refund rupees 24000 crores to its investors name this business group this was in the news few months back it's almost like forgotten it yeah with uh, sebi has basically uh, moved to supreme court uh, for seeking arrest and barring the group which has failed to comply with the court's order to refund rupees 25000 crores to its investors right so what is the name of this group is it sahara group is it jindal group is it reliance energy limited or is it vipro it's an easy question most of you must have heard of it that's right it's sahara group okay and can someone tell me uh, what is the full form of sebi s e b i sebi stands for securities and exchange board of india that's right shashank and sajin you got it right sebi stands for securities and exchange board of india okay and the answer to this question is a sahara group the 
this let's see who can who can the good memory we are talking about the series uh, in which australia was trumped 04 right uh, so the question is who among the following cricketers has been awarded the man of the series in the border gavaskar test series played between india and australia in feb feb march 2013 who among the following cricketers was awarded the man of the series trophy in the border gavaskar test series played between india and australia is it ravindra jadeja is it r ashwin or is it michael clark or is it only vijay this person has been instrumental in this india swing and answer to this question is ravindran ashwin or ashwin okay so the answer to the third question is b not a not c not d but murli vijay also played a prominent role he has compiled a lot of runs but yeah uh, the person who was most instrumental in, in this india swing was is r ashwin d recently the world economic forum has named which among the following chief ministers in its annual list of young global leaders for 2013 the question is recently the world economic forum wef has named which among the following chief ministers in its annual list of young global leaders for 2013 is it umar abdullah Omar Abdullah, I mean to say, or is it Narendra Modi? Is it Prithviraj Chauhan, or is it Akhilesh Yadav? Which among the following chief ministers was named in the recent World Economic Forum in its annual list of young global leaders for 2013? The right answer to this question is yes. Uh, Simran has got it right. Akhilesh Yadav. D. The right answer to this question is D. Akhilesh Yadav. Of course, there are only uh, two of them who are quite young in this list, right? Omar Abdullah and Akhilesh Yadav. And it was Akhilesh Yadav who was uh, named in this list. Young global leaders for 2013. It's it's only time will decide uh, how much how good their predictions are. Let's see. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Who among the following? Okay, the answer to the previous question was D. Akhilesh Yadav. Okay. Now coming to the current question. Who among the following is the author of the novel The Black Man's Garden? Who among the following is the author of the no- novel The Black Man's garden is it nadim aslam is it nigella lawson is it hilary mandel or is mukha variyar that's right all of you got it right the answer is uh, nadim aslam okay nadim nadim aslam is author of the novel the blind man's garden can someone tell me who nigella lawson is and why uh, she was in the news recently Nigella Lawson uh, is a ce- celebrity chef and uh, TV uh, TV show host, TV presenter. In fact, she is uh, quite famous all across the world, particularly on TLC channel for her programs on cooking. And critics have uh, often uh, talk uh, talked about her shows as food porn. And she was in the news recently uh, over the over domestic violence. In fact. Uh, her husband a billionaire he tried to strangle her in a pub, public restaurant right uh, and ever since that she has left him too in okay and that's why she was in the news recently nigella lawson right uh, she was in the news because of this assault by her husband okay uh, moving on to the next question The 2013 BRICS conference was held in which of the following countries? BRICS it's an uh, it's a confederation of not a confederation sorry it's a uh, 
it's a group of developing countries brazil russia india china and south africa right so this was uh, the 2013 conference of brics was held in which of the following countries is it china is it south africa is it india or is it brazil that's right it is held in durban in south africa right the 2013 brics conference was held in south africa okay and brics stands for brazil russia india china and south africa by the way it's a group of developing countries that aspire to be developed nations okay we go to the next question that's right Very for a BRICS fan, and uh, can someone tell me which country among these, among the BRICS nations, has seen a wave of protest recently? For uh, there have been a wave of protest that took to place across the country for government reforms in one of these BRICS countries. It, that's right, it's Brazil, and uh, S stands for South Africa, by the way. Shashank S stands for South Africa. Okay. So, uh, coming to the next question. Recently, the Washington University School of Medicine has claimed to discover a poison resembling nanoparticles of which species that can destroy HIV virus. Recently, the Washington University School of Medicine. has claimed to discover poison poison resembling nanoparticle of which species they were uh, claimed to discover a nanoparticle uh, poison right uh, resembling which species that can destroy hiv virus is it snake is any honeybee is it lizard is it shark it has to be either snake or honeybee right Uh, you know, lizards and sharks are not poisonous. Lizard, maybe there is an exception. As far as I know, no, there is no lizard that is poisonous, right? But uh, and the answer to this question is B, honey bee. So uh, they uh, they were claimed to discover a nanoparticle, right? Uh, that resembles honey bee poison at a molecular structure, molecular level. Claimed to destroy HIV virus. Very further tests are going on. It's not affirmed yet. Okay. So the right answer to this question is B, honey bee. Okay. Let's see. Recently, which woman of Nepalese origin has become the first to conquer Mount Everest twice in a week? Can you believe that she conquered Mount Everest twice in a week? What is the name of this uh, woman? Woman of Nepalese origin, origin, who conquered Mount Everest twice in a week? Even again, uh, this is more of a see, uh, common sense question, right? Even if you don't know the answer, you can kind of guess it from the name. Deepika Kumari, she is of course she is uh, she is the athlete. female archer who represented in india recently in olympics and she won gold the and she's not bachendri you all know she is indian again so it has to be the churim sharpa or junko tabe and sharpa as you know she know sharpa right tenzing norway also happened to be sharpa right these are the these are there you could say there are pahadis of nepal right they uh, If you are aware of that thing, you could have guessed the answer as Churim Sharpa, right? That that's a, which is the right answer to this question. In fact, it's Churim Sharpa. Okay, so the right answer to this question is A. Let's go to the next question. Who was elected as the president of the Confederation of Indian Industry (CII)? Stands for the Con Confederation of Indian Industry for the year 2013-14. Who among the following was elected as the president of the Confederation of Indian Industry for the year 2013 and 
I repeat, who among the following was elected as the president of the Confederation of Indian Industry for the year 2013-14? Is it Adi Godrej? Is it S. Kopari Krishnan? Is it Sumit Mazundar? Or is it Ajay S. Sri Ram? That's right, most of you got it right. The answer to this question is S. Gopal Krishnan. And uh, who is he? Who is S. Gopal Krishnan associated with? S. Gopal Krishnan, his full name is Senapati Gopal Krishnan. He is uh, currently the executive vice chairman of Infosys Technologies. Right? So he is associated with Infosys. Make a note of it. So the right answer to this question is option B. We go to the next question. UN Secretary, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki Moon has recently presented the Thomas Jefferson Eternal Vigilance Award to which of the following persons? Even General Secretary Ban Ki Moon has recently presented the Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of uh, United States, right? Thomas Jefferson. So the name of the award is Thomas Jefferson Eternal Vigilance Award. This was presented to which among the following persons? Is it Somnio Banerjee? Is it Aditya Singh Ahluwalia? Is it Hardeep Singh Puri? Or is it Harbhajan Singh Dillon? That's right. The right answer to this question is Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri. Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri has been awarded the Thomas Jefferson Eternal Vigilance Award, U.S. Secretary General Ban Ki Moon. Okay. We go to the next question. Madhya Pradesh government is giving aid for reconstruction of the which, which temple in Sri Lanka? To, uh, to which, for the recon, for reconstruction of which temple is Madhya, Madhya Pradesh government has agreed to give aid to Sri Lanka? Is it Sita Ram temple? Is it Sita temple? Is it Radhesham temple? Or is it Annapurna temple? Uh, for those who have missed the last question, uh, the right answer to the previous question is C, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri. Hardeep Singh Puri, that's the name of the person. Okay. So coming to the current question, yes, you, you could comment a while, yes, we are talking about a temple in Sri Lanka where Sita was imprisoned, right? And yes, the, 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 the temple was built in honor of Sita. Okay, the temple, not Sita Ram temple, it's Sita temple, right? The, uh, Answer to this question is B. 46, the answer to the 46 question is B. In fact, the uh, Sri Lankan government has again been in the news, in fact, yesterday, for banning which magazine? One of the magazines, one of a certain international magazine, had a cover, uh, cover page story titled The Face of Buddhist Terror. Terror. Right? Uh, it was, it was of course referring to the violence that took place in Myanmar, right? So uh, this magazine has come up with an issue titled The Face of Buddhist Terror and this issue was banned in Sri Lanka which is which happens to predominantly Buddhist country, okay? It, that's right, Timran has got it right, it's Time Magazine. This uh, Time Magazine issue for this month has been banned in Sri Lanka. Uh, since it's a sensitive topic. In fact, for those who are not aware, Sri Lankan constitution explicitly forbids anyone else, anyone who is not a Sinhalese Buddhist to become the Prime Minister or President ever. Only Sinhalese Buddhist people are eligible to become, uh, to become the Prime Ministers and Presidents. Okay. Uh, 
So we go to the next question. Okay, the, and this question is uh, discussed recently in the session before this, of course. Uh, which of the following companies was awarded the status of Maharatna in January 2013? Which of the following companies was awarded the status of Maharatna in January 2013? Is it CIL, is it BHEL, is it SIA, SAIL, or is it ONGC? That's right, the right answer to this question is BEL, B. Can someone tell me the full form of BEL, what BEL stands for? Anyone? That's right, Bharat, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Bell stands for Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Okay. That's right. BHEL stands for Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited. Can someone tell me what is the full form of sale? Anyone? The full form of sale. Sale Chateau, that's right, Steel Authority of India Limited. That's right, Sale Chateau, Steel Authority of India Limited. And uh, what about ONGC? Can someone tell you what, what ONGC stands for? ONGC stands for Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. ONG stands for Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, right? And it's, can someone tell me where the headquarters of ONGC is, is located at? The headquarters of ONGC. No. Siddha has got it right, yes, and has it too. It's in Dehradun. The headquarters of ONGC are located in Dehradun. Okay. Now, moving on to the next question. Who won the second title in Hero Women Pro Golf Tour 2013? Who won the second prize basically uh, in this Hero Women? Pro Golf to 2013. This is something, yeah. Not many people would be aware of. Right? The answer to this question is uh, Neha Tripathi. Okay, Neha Tripathi. She has uh, rose fame recently. Right? She is one of the top professional, uh, professional golfers of India. Okay. No. So let's move on to the next question. The Himalayan nation Nepal has just thrown up its first Forbes billionaire in Asia. Or in other words, who is the first billionaire from Nepal? Who was the first who was the first billionaire from Nepal? Oh, by the way, I just want to clarify in the last question, it was the second title. I thought we read it wrong. Uh, she did not win second title, it was the second title. Sorry about the confusion. It was Neha Tripathi who won her second title. Okay, it's not second place. Okay, okay, the question is again, let's read into the actual question. The Himalayan nation, Nepal. So, who is the first billionaire from, the, uh, from Nepal? 
is it mahendra singh is it vinod choudhary is it amar singh yadav or is it rajaram pande let's see how many can get this right for those people who are familiar with yy are you uh, how many of you are familiar with this yy here it's a noodle brand in fact tastes much better than maggi right uh, yes noodles that's right so oh, mr vinod choudhary he is associated with that is uh, is the current president and uh, md managing director of this choudhary group right the most famous product is yy noodles right i'll just pay for you in case you're not familiar it's not uh, w a it's it's y y w a i w a i right so he happened to be the vinod mr vinod choudhary who heads this choudhary group right he he is the first billionaire from nepal okay now moving on to the next question so uh aiming to strengthen bilateral ties in the fields of trade and economy crown prince of bahrain will pay a visit to india okay the crown prince of bahrain will be uh, will be visiting india soon to strengthen the bilateral ties in the fields of trade and economy so the question is who is this person or in other words who is the crown prince of bahrain is it prince salman bin bin hamad al khalifa is it prince amir bin hamad or is it prince sharuk hamid al khalifa or is it prince imran bin hamad al khalifa let's see who can answer is it salman amir sharuk or imran the right answer to this question is in fact it's salman prince salman bin hamad al khalifa he is the crown prince of bahrain uh, who will be visit who will be paying visit to india to improve uh, to strengthen the ties between the nations okay so uh, i guess we have come to the end to end to the session uh, okay there are more questions too but uh, there is not sufficient time so what we are going to do is like uh, the entire recorded session it would be uploaded on the disk right so we would have this uploaded probably by tomorrow okay and right uh, and uh, there was one one question in particular right uh, we had to discuss this thing whom barack obama has appointed as uh, as the upcoming next mpa chief and right, i'll just refer to this question just just you know give me a minute i think it's milson only but let me just okay uh looks like i'm wrong it's in fact the right answer to this question is james comey james comey is the answer to the 25th question i'm sorry about the mistake there okay it's not milson the third it's james comey okay so that's an excellent session folks uh, most of you folks are very active in fact and you got most of the time you got the questions right i really like the enthusiasm you guys are showing so i hope to see you soon again we'll pack more interesting questions more challenging questions in fact you guys are going to make me work harder <laughs> right the response has been amazing okay so i'll see you again in the next to next thursday that is the third thursday of this month right so uh, a link will be sent to all your sis accounts for the same right been great interacting with you see you soon bye